We've hinted around about capacitors. We've talked about them in previous chapters. Can we put them in circuits? We sure can. The very important and essential part of radio circuits. Can we put capacitors in series and in parallel? Yes sir, -y. we sure can. All right, let's calculate the equivalent capacitance for capacitors connected in series. So, <clears throat> these two guys are in series. Why? The same uh, current that passes through one must pass through the other. You say, well, it's kind of weird to talk about the, the current in a capacitor, Dr. Edwards, because um, no current can pass between those two plates. <clears throat> so this would be the positively charged plate on the left side and the negatively charged plate on the right side. What happens, actually, is you do think of a current through the, the capacitor, but it's not really through the capacitor. The current comes up to it and then comes out the other side. So what happens is these positive charges accumulate on the left side of the capacitor and the negative charges accumulate on the right side of the capacitor and the charge of the capacitor is plus Q on the left side, minus Q on the right side. <coughs> But the, the current coming into this capacitor must be the same as the current leaving the other side of the capacitor and entering the second capacitor if they're in series, like this. Um, and that's equivalent to an uh, equivalent capacitance of Cs. How do you do it? Well, we're going to use the same technique that we did for resistors in series. We added up the voltages. V1 plus V2, the voltage across the first capacitor plus the voltage across the second capacitor. You may recall, I hope you do, <coughs> that the capacitance is Q divided by the voltage. <coughs> so, <coughs> The voltage, if I want to solve this for the voltage, I'm going to have to multiply both sides by the voltage, and these voltages will cancel, and then divide both sides by the capacitance. So the voltage, these two can't, capacitances now cancel, the voltage is Q over C. So the voltage V1 becomes Q over C1, Voltage V2 is Q over C2. We can factor out the Q, and we get 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. And that is equal to Q times 1 over C, the equivalent capacitance for capacitors in series. Well, that's a happy day, because I've got a Q out in front of this side, and a Q out in front of this side. And I, I can therefore read off the equivalent capacitance, 1 over Cs equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. And that's what we have here. <coughs> plus another one. So you say, well, hang on. In series, resistors, you just add them up. Rs equals R1 plus R2. And I say, you're right. And you say, but here, you have to add up the one overs for capacitors in series. I say you're right. What about the equivalent capacitance for capacitors connected in parallel? Well, in this case, we're going to have to add up the charges on the two capacitors. If the two capacitors are in parallel with each other, what can you say about their voltages? And you say, they're the same. And I say, you're right. So what we add up in this case is the charges on them. Since C is Q over V, the charge, you can solve for the charge by multiplying both sides by the voltage. And the charge is C times V. So the charge on one of the capacitors is C1 times V. Charge on the other one is C2 times V. We have a common V in both terms. We factor that out. 
and set that equal to the, capa the equivalent capacitance for capacitors in parallel times V. But there's a V in both, uh, on both here and here. And so to find out what CP is, I just divide through by V and I get the CP is C1 plus C2 plus dot 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 for how many ever capacitors you have. And as you've probably noticed, you just add the capacitors up for capacitors in parallel, as opposed to adding up their reciprocals. All right, we can now uh, do problems that are similar to the problems that we did for resistors. Um, so here we have three capacitors that are in series with each other. So I'm first going to find the equivalent capacitance for these three. Well, if they're in series, we can't just add them up like resistors. We have to add up one over. One over the equivalent capacitance for capacitors in series, one over 24 microfarads plus 1 over 12 microfarads plus 1 over 8 microfarads. Well, common denominator, we're going to need one. And the common denominator is 24. So we'll have 1 over 24 plus 2 over 24 plus 8 goes into 24 three times, 3 over 24 microfarads. There's an F right here. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 gives our old friend 6 over 24 microfarads. And that's supposed to equal 1 over Cs. Well, 6 over 24 is our old friend 1 fourth. So the equivalent capacitance is 1 fourth of a microfarad, right? And you say, nope, it isn't. It's 1 over that. So that gives us the equivalent capacitance for these three, the four microfarads. So then we we can um, so I've just copied these three capacitors from this diagram, and now I'm replacing these three that I circled over here with the equivalent capacitance of four microfarads. Well, I think you can see how to proceed from here. These two capacitors, if this is the bat is where the battery is attached, these two must be in parallel with each other. Voltages must be the same. Four plus four is eight. So now, then, I think you can see how to finish the problem. I'll let you finish it. Now we have a circuit with a 6 microfarad, an 8 microfarad, and a 5 microfarad. By the way, what's a micro? 10 to the minus 6.